Okay, great. Let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for your patience. Now, uh, we've got a couple questions here we'll address uh, before we get started here so you guys uh, have the answers going into it. Um, Andrea asks, is the Big Trends Toolkit utilize, uh, utilizable only with Metastock Zenith Pro? Uh, no. You'll be able to utilize it with Metastock end of day. Absolutely. Now, there are going to be some presentations uh, today that I will discuss that will require Metastock Pro um, as far as the demonstration is concerned. Uh, but as far as the features within Metastock that I will be covering uh, will be available in both end of day and pro. It's a great question. And uh, Dale, uh, you own it already? Yes, you'll be able to utilize uh, most everything today. Again, except uh, if you're using Metastock end of day 13, there will be some aspects of pro that I'll touch on that uh, you want. And then uh, Henry, this add-on's a good one. Yes, it is. It's been one of our uh, one of our top sellers historically. It's been out for a while, um, so I want to touch on that. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Now, as an introduction uh, to myself, my name is Logan Connors. I've been with Metastock now for over four years, um, and it's been a great experience. I've had a uh, an extreme building time with my own investing and my own knowledge behind the markets, and hopefully some of that uh, can rub off on you today and you can pick up something new. Uh, again, as we go throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, please just go ahead and type them in the chat window and we'll address them as we go along. So if it's something that I cover uh, or something that I haven't covered that you may want to see, uh, put it over in the chat window and I'll be able to present it for you uh, either during the presentation or at the end. Um, so again, I've been tr with Metastock for over four years. I do trade um, and I do trade options. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on utilizing options within Metastock, uh, specifically featuring Big Trends Toolkit. So let me uh, before we really dig into the program, let me give you some details behind Price Headley and his methodologies and what he uses and what I pull from his add-on that hopefully can give you a good insight uh, to make sense. Um, but of course, as always, uh, let's go through the quick disclaimer. I am going to read it verbatim, sorry, uh, but once we get through this, we'll be on our way. Now, this demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So let's uh, give you some details about Price Headley. Okay, so Price Headley is the founder of BigTrends.com. When you get a chance, go take a look at his website. He's got a lot of uh, information there that you can take advantage of, some free newsletters based off of option trades, uh, etc. Um, now, he's appeared on several different uh, uh, TV stations, CNBC, Fox News, uh, Bloomberg Television, uh, he's written articles for the Journal, Barron's, Forbes, uh, Investors Business Daily. I mean, the list goes on and on. Needless to say, um, he's been in the markets for a long time, and he knows what he's talking about. I had the pleasure of being able to work with him personally here this last year at our Metastock Users Conference in Las Vegas. I um, was able to have one-on-one -on -one time with him and be able to listen to him talk about his methodologies and have him dig into it more just gave me that much better of an understanding and hopefully I can pass some of those aspects uh, on to you today. Now let's just kind of give you some details on the Big Trends Toolkit uh, before we go into it. Now the add-on itself, it's a large add-on. You get a lot with it. Now are you going to utilize all aspects of it? No. Okay. Like myself, I pull out pieces and I use that to my own advantage. Now, the nice thing with the Big Trends Toolkit is Price Healy's made it completely open source. Okay? So when you purchase this add-on to utilize it within Metastock, all of the formulas are available to you. There's no passwords required. There's no secret tricks or secret formulas that, uh, that no one in the world knows. He leaves it open for you. Okay? And by doing that, it allows you to adapt his structure maybe into some of your own methodologies that you have and I'm going to show you a template and an expert advisor that I've adapted myself 
and actually all of you that are with me today are going to have the opportunity to have that uh, this uh, add on this template this expert advisor that I've created I will send to you absolutely free so if you have big trends toolkit already you can send me an email I'll send it out to you um, and if you don't have big trends hopefully we can get you on the program and I can send you my workspace and my expert advisor as well uh, which again is also going to be open source so you can take a look at uh, what I've done now some of the uh, structures that he has he's got uh, some relative strength between the markets himself he really focuses heavy on the Williams percent R it's actually one of his favorite indicators along with acceleration bands and the efficiency ratio which I'm gonna focus more on today I found using those in option trading really adds a good complementary structure uh, when used together um, based off the acceleration band signal so that's what I'll be focusing primarily on today uh, but it does come with many different aspects for the software uh, the big trends uh, these, these are the systems that are incorporated that are based off those previous indicators that I just showed you so these are the um, expert advisors what you'd say uh, I'll put my email address in here so if you have to leave early for some reason you do have it and I also provide my contact details at the end of the presentation okay okay great so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll move on okay so again I was gonna focus on acceleration bands and the efficiency ratio so when trading options obviously options is a time sensitive instrument okay but with that we also want movement Okay, if we buy an instrument and even if it goes in our direction so say if I buy a call so I'm expecting that the price of the stock I've chosen is going to go up right if it takes a long time to go up I'm still losing money because of my time decay so when trading options you don't just have direction you also have acceleration which is what price talks a uh, largely on which is what is acceleration bands help you to do now this is just a definition pulled from the dictionary but you'll see how it really applies it says the act of accelerating of course is increased speed or velocity okay a change in velocity okay but how does that apply to trading well in, in a mechanics perspective it's the time rate of change of velocity with the respect to magnitude or direction okay and then, then a derivative of velocity with respect to time so essentially we want the bigger movement to happen in a shorter time frame sequence now with his acceleration bands the way that he structured them and the formulas that it uses pretty much encompasses price action or you know the actual price of the stock about 90 to 95 percent of the time well the other five percent is going to be when it's outside of those bands that's when you have your large volatility movements and we'll see that here once we get into the software okay and then the second aspect is what is efficiency okay we can all pretty much say that we know what efficiency is but the the aspect of it that I want to focus on is the accomplish of or ability to accomplish a job with minimum expenditure of time okay so in an options world what are we essentially trying to do we're trying to be efficient okay so if we can be efficient with time we can take that time risk out of our trading at least as much as we can now can we always predict what the markets are going to do no right but that can give us a good structure so our goal with options what we want to do is we want to catch fast short bursts of price movement okay which allows us to be efficient again the structure of time okay so let's go ahead and we'll dig right into the software and I'm going to focus on Metastock first and then I'm going to look at aspects within the Zenith platform. Um, Metastock Zenith is part of the professional package but it gives you a lot of option tools and an option screen that uh, is pre-built and it's one that I use in my daily trading. It's very simple yet it's very effective in the way that it's structured. You don't have to have a complex structure in order to trade. Personally I feel that with option trading you know a lot of option traders get too complex you know, iron condors butterflies looking at all of these complex strategies that they utilize when you know personally at, at the end of the day it's you know is it gonna go up or is it gonna go down 
you know, how fast over what time frame. Okay? So we're gonna we're gonna look at it on a simplistic level here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna what's a chart that you guys are monitoring? I know Apple's a favorite one, seems to be. Does anyone have any recommendations of a stock I can open up right now? And we'll look at a daily chart uh, specifically. Amazon, Apple, QQQ. Okay. Amazon just had a big move down yesterday. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on next. Now, again, so what I'm going to focus on today with Price Heedley. So if we look at uh, Metastock 13, we look at our drop down list. Now, these are the templates that we get structured with the add on. So we've got uh, acceleration bands 20, okay, uh, 80, Bollinger Band 80 system, our efficiency ratio, force index. Now, these templates are kind of encompassing one or two aspects of the program uh, that is available to you. So what I've done is I have taken his acceleration bands 20 primarily because I'm a little bit shorter term again with options and I've taken his efficiency ratio and I've more or less put them together with a couple different twists that you'll be able to see. So this is the template LC option, LC just Logan Connors okay and what this is going to do is it's combining okay his his structure of the acceleration bands okay with his efficiency ratio and we're going to go and click that and we're going to say open chart okay now you're going to notice that it's going to be if you've got the big trends toolkit currently you'll notice that it is slightly different from maybe what you're used to seeing okay now in looking at some of these, uh, looking at some of these signals, okay, uh, let's talk about the structure of them for a moment. So first off, I'm going to talk about his acceleration bands. Again, the kind of the heart and soul of this is based off of these bands. Now, as you can see, the bands here in the chart, okay, obviously a a movement to the upside is going to indicate a buy signal, okay, and a movement to the downside is going to indicate selling potential. Okay? Now the way that Price uses his acceleration bands is he looks for two consecutive closes above the upper band for a buy signal or vice versa two consecutive closes below the lower band for a sell signal. Okay? Now what I have done is I've taken his structure and I've said okay I like what his bands give me. It really does give me a good opportunity for some power moves to the upside or the downside. Now I want to take that and I want to add an additional confirmation of sorts to what I'm looking at. Okay. So what I've done in the expert advisor as a standard price gives you his buy and his sell. Okay, which is again the two closes above or below the lines. I've gone in and I've add, added two confirmation type structures. Okay? So the buy, you'll notice how it ha you'll have a buy with no pluses indicating that it's a standard buy signal that price gives. Okay? You have a buy with one plus which will be one confirmation and a buy with two pluses which will be a two confirmation structure. Now what do I mean by confirmation? Not only do have I noticed okay, with trading that confirmation is key in any signal whether you're trading with the trend whether you're trading against the trend having a structure of confirmation is going to save you more often than it's not I mean a lot of times you'll get into it and you'll say well I would have missed this trade well you know what you would have missed a lot of other trades that would have been way against you as opposed to missing out on a potential run okay so the confirmation that I look for is not only do I look at two closes above okay, above the high, the first condition is, is I look that my signal bar has also made a higher high of the previous bar. Okay? Now it sounds simple but you'd be amazed on how effective that comes across if you use a simple confirmation that it, you are producing higher highs. 
Okay? That's the first confirmation. Now to get a double confirmation, okay, I want to see this entire bar up above the band, its entire range. Now what does that mean by its entire range? That means that its low price okay, or any price throughout the day was not below my top band. Okay? So as we can see with Apple, we had a good signal. So we had double confirmation. We broke a higher high. Okay? And we also had the entire price movement up above those bands. Okay? Now based off that signal, what that tells you is it says, okay, we've got some major volatility that's pushing out of the normal standard range that we have, okay? which is that acceleration. Price is accelerating. Okay? Now, where does the efficiency ratio come into play? Okay? Now the efficiency ratio, this indicator down at the bottom, okay, is very simple in the way that it's structured. Okay? We've got a zero line and then if we've got above 30, typically means that we're in a bullish efficiency. So price is moving extremely efficient in the upward direction. Okay? Now to the flip side, if we've got our efficiency even below zero or down to negative 30, okay, we've got a very low efficiency on that structure. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that is highlighted in this expert, this one that I've adjusted slightly, by your trend down here at the bottom. So we can see that if we get within our chart we get a green highlight. That's indicating that we are in a good bullish efficiency run. Okay? If we start to get red spots, it's indicating that we are in a bearish efficiency run. Make sense? Okay. Do you guys have any questions so far? I know I move kind of fast, but we want to fit this, I want to fit it all into our time structure so I'm not keeping you here all on your Thursday afternoon. No questions? Okay, great. Well, I'll just continue to move along. If you have questions, again, please feel free to ask. Okay. So in analyzing this trade, okay, we can go back and we can analyze Amazon as well. But the most recent one with Apple, we can see that we have a very good confirmation. Okay. Not only do I have my price where I want them as a higher high, also my range above that band. Okay. I also have my efficiency rating up. Again, well, you know, what is efficiency? It's the ability to get a task done within time, within a time constraint. Okay? Now, utilizing this signal, only part of trading is getting in. Okay? I'm sure that a lot of us could agree that getting in is actually relatively easy. All right? The structure or the difficultness of a trade Okay, comes with exits, in, in, especially in my personal experience. Now, Price Eadley, he's created what's called the expert commentary. Now, all Metastock applications have what's called the expert commentary, and I've just transferred his expert commentary over. Now, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go to View, Expert Commentary, and I'm going to go ahead and put this over on the side of the window. Now, it gives you some details about price, but if I click above a buy signal, okay, you can see that it says the acceleration band system is currently indicating a long opportunity. Okay? If the bar close and the, the bar's prior close are both greater than the upper acceleration band. So essentially what I've kind of already explained. Okay? But then he breaks into what type of option strategy should you be looking at. Now option strategy is going to vary of course based off of your own personal interest. I'm going to kind of go over prices structure and then I'll get into my structure a little bit and give you guys both both a sense on how you would look at playing options. Okay. Now, again, it just kind of highlights traders interested in this advantage opportunity should look at buying the stock or okay, option traders buying a call option in the second expiration month if you want to give it a longer time frame. Okay. As it says very, very aggressive option traders will look at typically a call option one strike price out or near the money of the current stock that's uh, cost 200 or less, while conservative option traders, uh, more intrinsic value, usually one strike in the money. Okay. Now, let me ask you guys this. For those of you 
that have traded options, what is an option price made up of? Go ahead and type in the chat. What two aspects is an option price made of? For those that are familiar with options. Intrinsic value and time value. Exactly. Okay. So what is intrinsic value? To help those that may be, may be new to options. The amount the option is in the money, right, or or uh, what your strike price of your option is in relation to the underlying price, okay? So to give you a perspective on that, if I have a strike price or an option contract, okay, that allows me to buy Apple, okay, at $105, okay, and if I were to cash that option in today, I could buy Apple at 105 and I could turn around and I could sell it for 115. Is that going to give me profit? Yes, it does. That's that's intrinsic value, okay? Amount option is in the money, is intrinsic value. Now, what is time value? It essentially is time you have left in order to exercise that contract, okay? So you've got three structures of options. You've got your in the money options, which means that your option strike price is less than if you're going long, okay, is less than what the stock is trading at now. Okay? Meaning that your option already has intrinsic value. You could buy it and turn around and sell it for a profit on the underlying instrument. Okay? Now, provided that it continues to go up, obviously. Now You've got at the money, okay, which can be slightly below, slightly above, which if we're looking at Apple right now, an at the money call or put would be at about 115, okay, because we're at the same price as trading. And then out of the money, okay, when you have an out of the money option, it means that you think something's going to go up to a certain time frame in, re in relation to time, okay. So, for example, if we're analyzing this historic this historic buy signal. Now I know it's easy to analyze it a, a, a historic buy signal, but just as an example purpose, if we look to get into a buy, let's say Apple's trading on this buy signal at 107, okay? And let's say, well, I know within a structure or a time frame that my option is going to, or Apple has the potential to trade up to 100 and, 115. Okay, let's say is my target. With that's what I've projected based off of what I see utilizing my systems. Okay, so I've got this projection to move to 115. Okay, now I can buy an out of the money call. Okay, which is going to be cheaper. Now, why is it going to be be cheaper? For those of you that trade options, why is an out of the money call always going to be cheaper than something that's at or in the money? No intrinsic value, exactly. So what are you buying? So when you're buying an out-of-the-money call or an out-of-the-money option, what are you buying? If we have intrinsic value and time value, what are we buying? We're buying time, exactly. Okay. So the only value that you have is going to be that value of time, out of the money. Okay. But I can get the option cheaper, so if then that option, you know, Apple actually does trade up above 115, I now have what? Intrinsic value of an option that I bought for only time value. So I'm adding intrinsic value to that, okay? Where I didn't have any before. So that's where I'm making my profits. So in looking at options, do out of the money options have a greater potential? And if you can see me right now, I'm, qu I'm quoting my fingers when I say potential, right? right? For profit, yes they do because you have the potential to gain that intrinsic value, okay? However, however, just like Phil said, you have a less probability of profit because you have to make up that distance before you're going to get into intrinsic value. Okay? Time itself is a brutal structure. Okay? Take it from me. Time can be a brutal structure and so can volatility. We'll get into volatility here in just a minute and kind of explain to you what that means on simplistic terms. 
So what I did now, price, when it comes to exiting the trade, you know, okay, flipping back to our trade structure here, he recommends looking at three different aspects as far as closing his trade. Okay? Now, he looks at closing the first Friday of the expiration month, okay? Closing by the first Friday of the expiration month. So essentially close before the week of expiry, okay? Because in a time perspective, that's when you lose the most time value is that last week. Okay? Um, to use adaptive, so something that's kind of adjusting as you go, he looks at prices crossing back into that top acceleration band, which is what I prefer, okay, next to time. And then he also utilizes a 10-period exponential moving average. Now, in the chart, that is the red line that you can see, okay? Now, the buy exits are going to be structured based off of that 10-period moving average but as we know options don't always move in direct you know in direct relation with the underlying instrument so let me kind of go through a workflow of what I've added in relation to time again time is going to be a big factor and it's something that we can't structure okay time is more or less the guessing <laughs> the guessing game of the options world well Yes, it looks like it's moving, but how long is it going to take to get to a certain level? Okay. How much am I risking of time in order to balance out an intrinsic value state? Okay. So what I've done is I've gone in, and in this expert, I have added the second Friday in the month. So what would the second Friday? When is, when is expiration Friday? When is expiration Friday? Come on, option traders. I know you know. Third Friday. Great. So the third Friday of each month is option expiration. Okay? The third Friday. Now, I'm not talking about different weekly options and stuff like that. But the, the, uh, the third Friday of, of the month. So what I've gone in and done is I've gone in and I've highlighted in green. I don't know if you guys can see this. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay? In green highlights the second Friday of the month. Okay? So what is that indicating to me? That the last week of expiration is coming up next week. It's a visual cue. Now, again, what I just described before, when do we lose the most time value on an on an option? Provided whether it's intrinsic or out of the money, they're both going to have a time value attached to them. It just depends on the size. Okay, that last week we're going to lose the most. Okay, that's when time value decreases the fastest is in that last week. Okay, so what we're highlighting here is we've got a good trade. Okay, and we haven't closed back into our bands. You can see this the the Apple trade continues to move. Okay, now as I get into these volatility movements here, what is this indicating to me? that I'm losing value quickly in relation to what I've lost before. Okay? So just a simple visual cue like that adaptive is going to help you in your charts that says, okay, now I need to make a decision. Okay? Now, if we have an option that's in the money, okay? oh, oh, let, me, let me phrase it this way. When it comes to closing an option, what are the basically the three structures that we can do for closing our option. There's three ways or three structures that we can that we can close it. Maybe three and a half. <laughs> or I guess two and a half. Sell it, exercise it, or expire. Correct. Okay? So we can sell it off. So we can sell the option for what the option price is. Now, by doing that, okay, before expiration, we're going to we're going to collect intrinsic value if there's intrinsic value, but we're also going to collect time value. Okay, you guys with me? So there's two there's two sides to that. So if I sell on this Monday, okay, if I sell it, I'm going to get a value of my intrinsic 
and I'm going to get the value of my time. Okay. So what if on this Monday I fulfill my option or exercise my option? Okay. That means that I said, okay, I reserved the right to buy Apple at $110. I'm now going to buy 100 shares. Okay. I'm going to buy 100 shares at 110. They're going to be in the money, of course, because it's trading at 115. However, what do we lose when we do that? What do we lose? We lose our time. Okay. Does that make sense? So if we exercise a contract while we still have time left, we're losing that time value. Okay. So if your if your structure, if you've got something that's trading like this, you're not getting triggered to exit based off of your technical, your fundamental, your you know that that little voice inside your head that tells you you need to get out of something that we don't pay attention to enough and then we pay attention to too much under other circumstances. The best time you, if you're wanting to look at exercising a contract that's kind of in a run, okay, you want to look at exercising that okay, later on in the expiry. Now there's going to become, this is simplistic strategy terms, yes you can get in more complicated structure, but simplistic terms. And then, of course, you can let it expire. Now, if you let something expire, it's going to expire worthless. Okay? Just like a, a movie coupon that's got $15 on it that says you can use it by Christmas time. You go to the movie theater on January 1st wanting to use it, it's worthless. Even though you paid $15 for it, it's no longer good because you're past this point. Okay? So when looking at these options based off of what you're looking at, okay? You want to utilize time above and above all, in my opinion, okay, my opinion, first when it comes to exercising your exit strategy. Structure your time. Okay. Second comes into play with intrinsic value if you have it, which is going to be based off of a technical indicator, okay, or say a stop level on where if the price comes against you, you're going to get out. Okay? What's going to cause you to exit that trade if something starts to go south? Okay? Now, utilizing those things, let's look at the options, uh, the option watch within Zenith. So, okay, so moving away from Metastock end of day, just for a moment, we'll be back into that. Okay? Now, when looking at Metastock Zenith, Okay, you've got again a pre-built option stream. Now I use this, and it's just because it's very simple and it's already built for me. Okay, so we're gonna go to. I might not have it. Let's see, I have the library. We'll bring this over. Now flex. We'll add it. Great. Okay, so now that I'm in my flex samples, if I just scroll down, okay, I've got one for options. I'm going to click on options and it's going to build me a workspace here. Now as this is pulling up, okay, we're going to talk about structuring, okay, your position sizing with options. Now options gets a bad name, okay, it gets kind of a bad rap and I'm sure all of you have heard this before, but they say, oh no, options are too risky. Okay, options are too risky. Well, you know what? That's incorrect. Okay, that's absolutely incorrect. Risk, okay, in the markets, the way that I define risk is what you're willing to structure your risk at. Does that make sense? So when I buy an option, okay, I am leveraging what? Remember, an option con contract, I'm not actually buying the shares, okay, but I'm leveraging the ability to buy shares. You guys with me? So if I wanted to buy a hundred shares of Apple right now, okay, for an expiry date in December, or well no expiry date, okay, if I'm buying the underlying shares, 
How much is it going to cost me? If Apple's trading at $115 right now, how much is it going to cost me in equity value to buy 100 shares? How much is it going to buy me? Math whizzes. 115 grand. Right, if we want to get exact, it'd be 115,000 or yeah, 115,040. Okay. Not 11,000 more. Okay. So if I'm buying those shares, okay. Now if I take an option. And I've got an option that's trading at two dollars and fifty cents. Okay, what's that option going to cost me? Okay, now the rule of thumb with option pricing, you do the price of the option times a hundred. So it's essentially it's giving you the price per share. So two dollars and fifty cents okay, would be two hundred and fifty dollars. Where am I tying up less capital? In the option. Okay. So it allows me to be more flexible with my account. Now, if you've got a $10, $20 million account, trade the underlying, okay? Because you've got the power and the means to do so. But with most of us individual retail traders, we're not trading with $10, $20 million, okay? So we want to be able to utilize that capital and spread it out, use it efficiently, not have all of our eggs in one basket, okay? Because the more egg, you know, if you have all your eggs in one basket, you're missing out on a lot of other trades. Okay, you look at some of these systems that are these long-term buy and holds, and you're thinking to yourself, well, look, if I would have gotten here, I would have gotten, you know, I would have made look at this profit, but I would have been in the trade for two years. So what happened with your capital? It was tied up for that entire two years. Okay, a lot of times we miss that picture. We don't look at the efficiency of something. Okay how short I can make those gains so that I can be able to take advantage of more opportunities. Okay. Now, with an option, okay, buying options, you can only, okay, let me ask you guys this. If I have, if I invest $100,000 in the market, how much am I risking? And this may or may not be a trick question. <laughs> But if I, if I put in $100,000, what am I risking? Okay. And we say 100 k Actually, that's wrong. Okay. You're risking what you're willing to risk. So if your risk is, if you're willing to risk the full 100000 and you're willing to have that go against you, then that's what your risk is. Okay? But if we structure our trade accordingly, you know, Apple, if you put in $100,000 in Apple, it's not going to go to zero overnight. Okay? There's always a structure to what you're going to risk. Okay? Now, options makes that easy. Okay? What's the maximum amount if I buy an option for $250 for the Apple for December Apple, what is the maximum amount I can lose? Worst comes to worst, which it expires, what? It just absolutely does not do, I, I buy, I think Apple's going up, it immediately falls out of the out of the bottom. Right, okay? I lose $250 leveraging 100 shares, okay? Now let's say Apple dropped 10 points overnight and I owned a hundred shares, how much would I have lost? A thousand dollars. Can you guys see where I'm coming out with the risk? Okay. Risk, a lot of us we structure it in a way that we feel if we're investing that entire portfolio that we're risking that entire portfolio. That's wrong. If we're going into that with that stake, then you know what? That's what's going to fulfill itself. That's what you're going to be risking. Okay? We're risking that total amount. Okay? And by playing options and by utilizing these strategies, especially with price, and he's very big on this as he structures it and he says, okay, you know what? You can only risk as much as that option is worth. Now, the problem is 
is that traders, we go in and we say, okay, I've got $10,000 to invest. I want to make money quickly. I'm going to go in and I'm going to buy as many calls. It's $250 per one. I'm going to invest all $10,000 in it. Okay. And that's where the misconstrued perspective of options are more risky than stocks comes into perspective. Okay. Now, why is that? It's because they over leverage themselves. We over leverage ourselves as traders. We get greedy. Okay. Or we're just uneducated on how we want to structure. Okay. So in Metastock Zenith, this workspace looks at the key aspects of option trading that you want to incorporate. Now, I'm not going to get all fancy, okay? And some of you might be underwhelmed at some of the information that's provided, but you don't want to overthink it, okay? Thomson Reuters has already bundled in a beautiful package that gives you what you need. Now, we've got our option chain. Of course, if you're trading options, you're familiar with the option chain is going to structure what your prices are at the strike price. Okay, we know what option chain is. You've got a chart of your option, okay, which is going to show two key things. We want to look at volume. Okay, you see big spikes in volume on a particular option. Okay, you can see that there's some bias there. You can ride that volume. Okay. Also, very important is implied volatility. And I'm going to get into that in just a moment and show you with Metastock Pro what you can structure with that implied volatility and how you can utilize it and harness that. And, and that's something new within 13, by the way. And then you've got your option calculator. Now, as an option guy with the Greeks, the two Greeks that you want to pay attention to, to be perfectly honest, I mean, there's millions of them, right? It seems like. The two you want to pay attention to is delta and theta. Okay? Who knows what delta is? Option traders. No one? So my delta is how much my option is going to increase. Okay? How much it's going to increase per one dollar that the stock goes up. So if I have a low delta, typically means I'm out of the money, so my option is not going to increase as fast as the underlying. Okay. And then theta is how much I'm going to lose in time value every day. So what is that covering? It's covering our intrinsic value relation between our option and our underlying. And it includes our time. So if I'm looking at this this Apple expiration right now, or excuse me, this is a Thomson Reuters expiration, it's showing a theta of, of, point, of negative 0 0.09. So that means I'm losing 9 cents per day. Right? Right, exactly. So, let's minimize this. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, I just gave you a lot of information all at one point, and we're, we're heading back into Metastock now with how do we apply this structure into big trends? What does big trends give us to finalize it? But does that, do you guys have any questions on that? Very fast. If you do, go ahead and put them in. Let's move over to Metastock. I don't want to run us out of time. So going back into... Metastock. Now, remember, I mentioned implied volatility. Okay. Now, what's implied volatility? Which is this screen right here, looking back at our zenith chart. Okay. What is implied volatility? Implied volatility is essentially what is the option worth? How much is it going to cost you? Okay. If you have really high implied volatility, then options are more expensive. If you have implied volatility that's lower then you're going to have cheaper options. Does that make sense? So where do you think you would want to buy options? Do you want to buy it when implied volatility is really high? Or do you want to buy it when it's low? Low volatility. Exactly. So what I'm going to show you now, this is just Metastock Pro, unfortunately. Okay. But with Metastock Pro, you can look at that implied volatility directly in your charts. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a new chart. 
and the symbol I'm going to use is AAPL for Apple. Okay, and here's here's the code. Is that better? The volume. Okay, so the code I'm going to I'm going to put the code in the chat. It's this. You would add this to the extension of your symbol. It's ATMIV dot U. Okay. So I just put that in the chart. So if I put an apple and then add that extension, A-T-M-I-V dot U. I'm going to go next, and I'm just going to apply a clean template. All right. And I'm going to change these dots to a line. So what is that giving me? This gives me the implied volatility for apple in a historical price plot. Okay. Now, why would this be beneficial to us? Why would this be beneficial? Okay. It gives us a gauge as to where our implied volatility rests. By default, I can go right click and I can go to change field. By default, it's looking at a 30-day ATM call. So it's saying what are the prices of a 30-day call. Okay. Now let's go back and let's look at the date that we got our buy signal. Okay. Again, Big Trends gave us a great confirmation tool. We're above our acceleration bands. Our efficiency rating is very bullish. Okay. We're efficiently moving up. Okay. We've got our confirmed signal. Price tells me that I should be looking at option trades right now. Okay. If I look at the, the implied volatility, so this day was 10.29. Okay. Now if I go back over to my options, okay, here is 10.29. I'm going to draw a vertical line. Okay. Now let's look at historically. Does that seem pretty low in relation to where my volatility is? So is the cost of options right now, when we got this signal, was it low or was it high? It was low. Right? So not only are we getting an effective, efficient signal based off of our Big Trends Toolkit indicators, right? we've got a low structure for volatility. Now let me give you a little bit of a secret here in looking at volatility. Okay? A lot of customers, they say, well, how do, you know, volatility can, it fluctuates so much, how do I really know if it's low in relation to that time? Right. What I do is I take a simple Fibonacci tool okay, and I look at the four most recent downward spikes. Okay. So I could look at the four big spikes. One, two, three, four. So here's my lowest. And then I look at my previous highest, which is about right here. Okay. Now when this occurred, you know, on this day, let me get a circle here, which was right here, right? When that occurred, my volatility was below the 23.6 retracement. Okay? That's what I use for a simple gauge okay, into where the applied vol implied volatility is. So by utilizing Metastock Pro and that ATM IV code, you're able to take the signals that we get from big trends, okay, and we're able to apply them and see if we're paying too much for an option at that time. We want to see them drop, or we want to see them rise. More often than not, because of the way Price Heedley has his indicators structured, this efficiency rating and his timing bands finds those low implied volatility structures. It just does. I don't know what juju magic he used on it, but it works, okay? So it gives you that good structure. Now, I asked you guys earlier how, you know, what symbol are we looking at? And of course we said Apple. We all like Apple. But what if we want to find opportunities? 
Okay, what if we want to find out when these option trades are happening? We want to find out when a stock is going to be efficient. Okay, it's accelerating. Metastock, of course, has its explorer. For those using Metastock, you're familiar with this. Okay, those that might be new to Metastock, I can click on my binoculars up here at the top and Price Heedley's Big Trends Toolkit comes with the scans that we need. Now, I just use his standard acceleration bands. Okay. Now, if I look at this report, it gives me a wealth of information that we can use. It gives us a, a buy structure, or is it a buy above the bands? Are we short? Okay. And do we have any exits that have come into play? Okay. So it gives us that good structure if we're looking for those opportunities, whether it's a buy or a sell opportunity. Okay. We can then apply our template, utilize our structure. Now, again, Price has made it so that we can create our own structure. Okay, so if I go back into this, uh, like if I go to the expert properties, okay, you guys can see that the code is available to you to apply. So I just went in and I just copied this signal and I just added a little and statement at the bottom that says and high is less than bottom. It was very easy for me to apply it. I didn't have to be a programmer. I'm not a programmer. Okay? I'm a trader. Okay? And as traders, typically, we need an easy structure. And then that's why Metastock, the way that its formula language is written now, I can, okay, it's still formulas, right? Okay? But the way that it structures is it's structured to fit someone who's a trader, not someone who's a programmer. You don't have to have programming knowledge and be able to code any software program that's thrown at you in order to use it, which is what you find in a lot of other cases. I see with TradeStation with easy language, you know what, to be honest, it's not so easy. <laughs> it's really not. I, you know, they should probably call it like uh, uh, intermediate to difficult language. You know what I mean? So it gives you an easy structure to change that. Okay. Now also, he's incorporated his system tests. You can go in and you can structure a system test and you can back test those signals to see historically if they've given you appropriate signals. How has it performed historically? How has it worked? Okay. When you sign up for the program today and you get my template, you can take my confirmed signals and you can copy and paste them directly into the system tester and you could test to see if the confirmation gives you a better outlook than the standard signal. Right? It's that easy to do. Now, another aspect of the program is he's got an expert advisor called Option Shark specifically, okay? which again looks for those movements. Okay? This particular scan really gives you a good outlook on when you get short bursts of movement. Okay? The thing is, is those signals don't happen as much. So you'll incorporate that Option Shark's with like your acceleration bands, you're going to get more signals in the acceleration bands, okay? And that option chart really gives you that strong confirmation of those powerful uptrends. Okay? Do you guys have any questions? I'm sure you do. I moved. I'm, I'm sorry I moved very quickly, but I wanted to really introduce putting an options spin on Metastock, okay? especially being able to scan and utilize those indicators that professionals like Price have already put into play. Do you guys have any questions? Go ahead and put them in the chat. Okay, let me get you my, uh, of course, my direct contact information. If you have questions, please feel free to go ahead and continue to type them. Um, you know, and as uh, one of the customers earlier said, they have this add-on, and it's a fantastic add-on. I think it was Henry that said it. Okay, and he's not the only customer. You know, there are individuals worldwide that are using it and using his structures. Okay. Now, kind of going back to this, if we need to get back in the program for some additional uh, comments, we can. Um, now, Metastock, just some details about the program. Of course, has been voted the best analysis software in its category, okay, its value category, for 23 straight years. 23 straight years. I can't think of anything that's lasted 23 straight years except my poor mother in raising me. 
Okay. Now, what is the cost of big trends? Typically, big trends is four hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Okay. With the holiday catalog and the promotion that Metastock gives, you can get it a hundred dollars off, which is three ninety-nine, and it comes with a thirty-day money-back guarantee. If you decide, you know what, Logan, I, I, it just didn't fit my strategy, then you get a full 30-day money-back guarantee refund. Okay, It's 100%. There's no restocking fee. You're not going to get charged a, uh, some hidden cost. You're going to get that. Okay, So just kind of some structures on the trial. I've got a great trial. If you're not using Metastock right now, you can do a $59 trial. And it gives you Metastock end of day for three months, or you can do a professional utilize the volatility structure I showed you today. It's two hundred and fifty dollars for Metastock for a full three months access. Okay. Now here's just some pricing on the on the Metastock. If you want more pricing on the purchase, okay, please let me know. Um, if you haven't used Metastock to start, the trial option is a great opportunity to to use. But if you're if you're set and you say, okay, this is what I want. Um, I can give you a discount at 440 and then the data depends on the structure that you'd like to use. And then uh, we've got some great upgrade pricing, just contact me directly on it. Now I can give you a $100 discount on Pro if you're interested in the Zenith, again the implied volatility structure and uh, upgrades as well, contact me. Now here's my direct contact information. Okay. Now again you're going to get that template and expert advisor that I've adjusted absolutely free. Whether you have Metastock now or I'm going to help you get set up with it. All you have to do is send me an email and I will send you that. I will send you an install file to add that to your Metastock account. Okay. Now you do have to have the Big Trends Toolkit because it refers to prices indicators in order to utilize that template. Okay. So if you don't have it, let's get you set up. And you know what? There's no risk to you. Again, like Henry says, you've got the best support out there. Okay. Got the best support out there. Okay? And you don't stay in business for over 30 years by putting out dishonesty to your to your customers. It just doesn't. Okay, so we like to work with that factor, and that's why we give you that money back. All systems aren't going to work for everybody. Okay, the way I trade isn't going to be the way that uh, that Henry trades or that Dale trades. Okay, Henry, please send me an email um, so that I so that I know to send it to you. My email is listed on the account. Write it down and then just shoot me an email requesting it and I'll send it out. Thanks. I'll make it easier for me. Um, so I mean there's no risk. You, you know, you'll get your free you'll get your full $3.99 back if you decide you don't want it. And uh, the only thing we're looking at is the is the cost at the trial. Okay. So, you know, take the plunge, look at it, see what uh, over 30 years of market experience the Metastock can offer. Uh, can help you do for your trading and help you st uh, structure as well as the 20 years of experience that Price Heedley has with his Big Trends Toolkit. Right. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Are there any last questions that I can help address for you guys? Any last questions? Now's your chance. I, I mean you can feel free to call me too if you've got something a little bit more specific. Good. So my international number is listed there. If you're outside the States, you can reach me at the top number. Middle number, if you're U.S. or uh, Canada, you can call me uh, toll-free at that number. Or again, send me an email. If you've already got big trends and you're already a Metastock user, send me an email and I'll send you my template and expert adjustments. And uh, again, if you're not, uh, let's get you set up uh, risk-free and uh, let you harness the power of Metastock. Thank you so much again for joining me today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, if you guys have any questions, contact uh, me directly, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, thank you so much. Best of luck with your uh, investments in the future, and take care.